Hello, my name's Neil Marshall. Today we're going to talk about crop rotations and how they will how they can benefit your soil. I'll talk about what we do and what um, and, and the reasons why, and hopefully this will help engage you with the process and some small understanding of how to do a crop rotation or a crop planning even for your own space. When faced with a bare bit of ground, you, you need a bit of planning to go into it. And uh, one of the ways of doing that is to d decide what you want to grow and put them in groups, family groups usually. Um, there's also um, other things to be considered that s s some crops are perennial and other ones are very sh short time in the ground. And uh, they, they don't work within the same rotation as some of the other crops which you grow for a whole season. We have a five or six groups, however many you want to, to put in your rotation. It's sometimes governed by the size of the, the, the plot you have. Um, we have um, five main ones in ours. We, we haven't included roots on this one, but um, they, they fit in in various places on the rotation. But we'll just talk about these five to begin with. If we start here, this is the courgette family, cucumbers, courgettes and um, squashes and pumpkins. And then we've got peas and we call this one the legumes, there's peas and beans. And um, if you like clovers and things, it's all the nitrogen fixing crops. And then the nightshade family, which include tomatoes, peppers and aubergines. It's a massive family that. Um, and then um, the onions, the alliums, onions, garlic, uh, shallots and leeks and then the brassicas, again a, another massive family, um, cabbages and broccolis and um, kales and all, all sorts. This represents our rotation. We have um, I've just gone through what the, the different groups. The, um, the way we, we, we do it, if, if we've got one greenhouse, we, we, um, if, and we start with tomatoes, it, the, say this greenhouse is full of tomatoes, the, the next crop to follow it would be the onions. And then the, the year after, the brassicas would be in, in this greenhouse. And then the cucumber family, and then the legumes and then back to tomatoes again. And that just gives, the, this greenhouse then gets to grow different crops. And one of the reasons that happened, we, we, we want that to happen is disease and pest buildups tend to occur when a crop stays in one place. So um, a, one example would be club root in brassicas. If you grow it in the same place all the time, there is a small possibility that a build-up of a problem like club root will occur. And um, it, it's very hard to get rid of that once, once you've got it. So by planting that type of crop in the, that bit of ground once every five years, we, we reduce that risk. Same will happen with pests and diseases. The more a crop stays in one place, the more at home the pests will, will, might find that area. Um, so yeah, it's just um, keeping things moving so that um, the, the, that the greenhouse has variety over time. The, the, there's various reasons um, that you, you put them in a certain order. Um, if you, the more you look into it, the more it complicated it gets. Um, We've got a fairly simple system based on the the one one crop amongst these lot that give back that put energy back into the ground are the legumes. So um, they grow in their roots um, some fungal and bacterial nodules, which take nitrogen from the air and turn it into something that's available for the crop. They they um, fix nitrogen and then um, through their life they're, they're providing a bit of extra to the, 
to, to, for the following crop and for, for themselves as well. And when you take them out, if you leave the roots in, that you know it, it it all helps, and um, so it, what follows then is 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 a good decision to start with, because it's the the crop that you want to the the heavy feeders we call them, and the tomato family are very heavy feeders, so um, we we they, they follow after the peas, and then after the tomatoes because they take quite a lot from the ground we. We, we tend to put compost in and then plant the, the onion family. Now there's two reasons for that because one, one is the compost is an addition and it will bring goodness for, 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 for the onions but um, we, we put the, our compost down on the surface as a mulch and, uh, and they, the onion family uh, aren't very competitive with, with weeds. They, they need a lot of weeding normally. But this, this layer of compost mulch helps reduce the amount of weeding we need to do. They, they work to, as, as, a, as a screen to prevent the weed seeds getting through to the light. Um, the, 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 the onions themselves don't necessarily need that much organic material, but the crop following does. So when the brassicas go in, they're still making benefit from that compost. Once you've made a few decisions like that, then you've, you're... you're rotation starts to form. We, we have a few gaps in this, in, 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 in this part of our rotation, well both, both, both of these, and so we, we might put some roots in, 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 in that, or, or we might have roots as a sixth part of our rotation. Well, one of the things that governs your rotation is how much space you've got and how many units you want within that space. We've, we've got a glass house and we fill it with brassicas or tomatoes, or the tomato family, I mean. Um, so we, we use that as our, our, our unit. What's not on the, the rotation, um, you might have noticed things like lettuces and anything that you might grow for a salad, um, or any perennials, sort of herbs and things. These, these the, the perennials and the herbs tend to, you, you can fix them in a obviously perennials are going to be there for more than one year so you need to put them in permanent sites and the salads can be part of this rotation in between things um, or uh, you have a, se a separate area where you you, you grow s salads and the fresh herbs um, they, they tend to be in the ground for a shorter period of time uh, you can grow several crops in a year so it doesn't, the, 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 most of these crops will be planted for the season um, and harvested once or over, over a period of time at least. Um, so they're, they're easy to represent in this manner, whereas uh, salads and things are more difficult. They're, they're, uh, we've talked about um, pests and diseases and why you would have a rotation um, to keep ahead of build-ups of pests and diseases but um, also every different crop behaves differently in the ground and in, in, in the space that it's in and so there, the, the, there might be some reasons there that you might grow a crop, one crop beside another. Um, some crops grow that with very shallow in the ground and other crops grow deeper so those two crops following each other will be drawing on different nutrients so the allium family, the onions grow quite near the surface and tomatoes uh, will grow much deeper. So all these things can impact on how, how you dis make your decisions about what follows what. I mentioned that we have roots in our rotation that aren't represented here because we um, add them to, you know, we, we, we mix them up a bit. Um, roots, examples of roots would be uh, beetroot um, carrots. We, we actually include in that uh, um, celery and uh, kohlrabi as well and fennel they they aren't all technically roots but um they are all of the same family um a family called the um umbelliferae <laughs> a lot a lot of people start their planning process by looking at a seed catalog buying 
what uh, the, the seeds that they, they, they like from the catalog. This, this um, might unbalance your, your rotation and so you need to think, think about the spaces and how, how many different crops can fit in each, each space, how many different varieties of the crop that you've decided is going to go in that space you, 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 can, you can order. Um, and then build your seed order around that and it helps um, it helps uh, keep, keep a boundary on how, how many seeds you order as well. Um, it's always nice to have a few unusual things to keep your interests in but um, it's, it's good also to be practical about um, what you need for, for eating purposes and, and things like that. But um, the, other, the other side of planning it's about your lifestyle as well so some people might want to plan chunks of time when they they're not available to be gardening and looking after crops so I know some people that sort of try and keep August fairly clear of intense work so they grow heavily for the spring period and the autumn period but have a, have a bit of a break in the summer other people might do that over winter more obviously um, but alongside those decisions you, you, you need to think about how much work input a crop has. Brassicas, um, you, you plant them, you, you need to keep them weed free and then you harvest them. With us we grow tomatoes up strings up into the top of the greenhouses and they need uh, visiting every 10 days to take off side shoots and help them climb up the plant, up, up the into the top of the greenhouse so that requires a lot of work and that that's all summer long so you, you might want to take some of these things into consideration.